Hello and welcome. My name is Kathy A and this is one of my favorite shows to do of the whole year. This is the best high-end makeup and luxury makeup for the year 2019. Now a lot of these things um, I have been using all year long. Some of them are fairly new to me this year. Um, but all of them are honestly things that I would wholeheartedly recommend to you. For all the ridges and lines and creases in my face, I film. It's kind of like spackling, really. This is the Clarins um, Instant Smooth Perfecting Touch. This is a light pink, uh, kind of creamy, but there's a little bit of texture to it. Feels a little modeling clayish. When you put it into the lines and into the deep set, I have a crease under my lips and I have deep set marionette lines, I call them St. Bernard lines. Um, it just fills them in. So when my makeup goes on over the top, it is very, very smooth. So this is from Clarins and it is the Perfecting Touch. For redness in my skin, and I do have a lot of redness in my chin and right now I have bronchitis, so I, I've been blowing my nose a lot. And you know how it is, gals, when you're blowing your nose a lot, you get a lot of patchiness, redness under here. Um, if I didn't tell you, you probably wouldn't know that I was very sick all week. But I had a lot of redness under my nose, um, and this just takes it away. This is the IT Cosmetics Bye Bye Redness Cream. And this is kind of a light beige cream. I put this, um, sometimes you can even reuse it as sort of a concealer. You can put it over blemishes, any redness or discolorations that you have. This works so well. It really does. And I'm not a huge fan of IT Cosmetics, but I do like uh, the Bye Bye Redness products. And I haven't found anything quite like it. It kind of neutralizes your skin, and so when you put your makeup over the top, it, it just has really good coverage. For eye primer, um, I generally use a lot of the drugstore and lower end um, kind of products, but I do use the Urban Decay. Um, this is the Potion, um, Primer Potion. This is the anti-aging. I hate that expression. I just, I embrace age. Well, I'm trying to. <laughs> um, anti-aging version. This one has a wand applicator and I basically just put a couple stripes in. I blend it in really well. Um, I try not to get too close to the inner corner of my eye with it because that can tend to look cracked and some of the eyeshadow can get stuck in there and look very cracked. So I just keep this generally to the outside. It does hold the eye makeup in place all day long, which I think is a great thing because I'm always blinking like most people do, but I blink a lot, uh, sweating, cold, tearing up. Uh, cold weather makes my eyes water, so uh, this works very, very well. Going into concealers, um, I have three here because um, one, I just don't like to promote the, the KKW or Kylie Cosmetics, but I do like this very much. I've been using it most of the year. This is the Kylie Jenner Skin Concealer. And I know a lot of people say, oh well, you know, it's made by ColourPop, the same factory that makes ColourPop Cosmetics, and these are identical to the ColourPop concealers. They are not. And when I research this, this has different ingredients than the ColourPop uh, concealer. And it acts differently on my skin than the concealer from ColourPop. So ColourPop's concealer is a little bit dry for me, and I don't really care for it. This one is great. And this is the color Gypsum, which is a very, very, um, it's not too light. It's a perfect um, concealer to just enough to brighten and cover but yet not look so light that it's unnatural. And I tap and pat in my concealer. I don't brush it in and I don't sponge it in. I tap it and pat it. I don't smear it in either and I don't draw a big stripe. I do tiny little dots and then I tap it in. And I think that application really is key. The way you apply some of these products can really make a huge difference in um, how they last throughout the day and if they pool or if they um, sink into your wrinkles. And I have a lot of under eye texture, texture they call it, which is really nice. Um, now since I don't want to encourage the KKW and Kylie makeup thing, I have my alternate um, concealer and this is 
MAC, and I'm doing, right now I'm working on a docutorial on the MAC Cosmetics line. Somebody had requested it last year, and I said I'd certainly be happy to do it. And so I've been going into MAC and trying different things, and um, I had a MAC girl, this was an anomaly, she was very nice, she was interested in what I had to say about makeup, she, she listened to me for my needs and my colors and everything else, and she went to work and found some products that worked for me. I'm very impressed with this. This is the um, Studio FX, um, Studio Fix 24 Hour Smooth Wear Concealer, and the color is NC20, and I was like, isn't that the yellow one? You know, it's like, yeah, this is something I would have never reached for on my own. And she, you know, got her little brush out and started swiping away up there. And I was like, oh my God, it's yellow. But it doesn't look yellow on. I, I have it on on this side. Let me just put a little dot here and I'm just going to blend it in with my finger. But you'll see that it doesn't look yellow when you blend it in. Now my color in MAC Cosmetics is NW20. That's my color. And um, this is NC20 because I wanted something that was more brightening. So she said this will work. And I, I was just very skeptical. But it works really well. And it lasts all day. And, you know, MAC used to be the standard by which all other cosmetics were compared. And for some reason, they fell out of grace on YouTube. And I don't know if it was because Estee Lauder took over and changed the line or all of their you know, releases with the Simpsons and the Nutcracker and all those things that weren't very good. Um, they just are kind of in the background. They're still making quality products and they're still raising the bar on a lot of levels. They have some wonderful products that are staples in people's collections and yet nobody's talking about them. So I will do a special on Mac coming up within the next month. Um, but the NC20 concealer was excellent for me. Now, if you just want a little bit of radiance, a little bit of brightness, you don't need a lot of color correcting or anything else, um, the YSL Touche Claw uh, is the Radiant Touch one. This is a brush, and you click it on the bottom, and it makes like this little pale pink kind of radiant thing, and it brightens up and makes, makes you look radiant. You can also use it on top points. You can use it as a highlighter. It's an excellent tool. So it's not really a concealer per se, it's more of a brightener. Now I had to include this because it's a brightener, it gives a radiant touch, and I think it's definitely worth mentioning because I do use it. Moving into foundation now, I have three types of foundation. I have a tinted moisturizer, I have a powder foundation, and I have a liquid foundation that I find is really nice. Let's start with the liquid foundation. It is Lancome's Tint Idol Ultra Wear, and this is the shade 140 Ivory Neutral. 140 Ivory Neutral is my perfect shade. That's what I'm wearing. Let me just show you what this looks like. Um, I'll just swatch it for you because I have two other shades. And what, what they do, and I think it's a wonderful thing, they do have options of getting small sizes so that you can try it out at home and try different samples. Now this is shade 100 and then shade 220. These are kind of some of the shades that they have available. So I have 140. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to swatch the 100. I'll just put that right there. It's the 100, which is a little light for me. And then I'm going to just put on the 140. Now this does oxidize a slight bit when it dries down or as somebody from Sephora told me once, it dries down to the color it's supposed to be. Great marketing. So you can see, this is the 100, this is the uh, 140, and then this is the 220. So there is quite a difference in those three shades, and those are fairly close together on the uh, spectrum of colors. 
So the 140 is the one that I use and I think it's very uh, close to my actual skin tone. I'm really impressed. Uh, this stuff goes on really well. Um, I've used it with different primers. I have used it without a primer. I've tried it with a sponge. I've tried it with a buffing brush, which is the way I tend to really like putting it on, mostly because I'm too lazy to wet the sponge. <laughs> um, but I think it lasts really well. It doesn't separate until about six to seven hours further into the day. And again, that depends on the weather and the heat in the room. Um, my own physical condition, what's going on with me, if I'm drinking a lot of coffee and the cup's leaning against my chin, it'll kind of dissolve it, but I think it's a great foundation. Now for tinted moisturizer, I'm going to use the product that won last year, and this is Derma Blend Creator, Flawless Creator Drops. Now this is a foundation on its own, but what I like to do is I take some CeraVe PM moisturizer, just a couple of squirts. I shake this up and then this is a dropper so I just use a couple of drops of this and I mix it in and this is really nice for um, winter time because you've got um, dry skin you know there's not a lot of moisture in the air and this just makes the perfect perfect uh, moisturizer that's tinted and it doesn't dry your skin out it's hydrating and you can use, you know, CeraVe PM is what I use with it. It works like a dream with that. You can use it on its own, full strength. You can mix it with other mediums as well. You can mix it with your primer. So I think that all in all, this is my all around favorite. And if I have to pick one of these products that wins, it is the Derma Blend uh, Flawless Creator Drops. I think it's excellent. This is N25 is my color in this. Now when you mix it with a moisturizer, it does lighten it up just a little bit, just so you know. Now the third type of foundation is a powder foundation. And generally because I have um, dry skin, I generally kind of shy away from powder foundations. But there are two that have always worked well for me. One is the MAC uh, Studio Fix and the other one is this one. And this is the Pure 4-in-1. Now, if you are normal to slightly oily, you would love this. This is a wonderful foundation. This is the shade Linen. comes with a mirror. And what I do is I use a powder puff um, to apply it. And I think it works so nicely. Um, it just... It gives you just a little wave of color. Um, and it doesn't really look dry on. I mean, it's really amazingly dewy and natural looking. I think this is great if you're working out or if you are in a situation where you're traveling, maybe you don't want to travel with a liquid um, foundation. This works really nicely. Now I got it in a slightly darker shade than my own true skin color because when you use a powder foundation it tends to sheer out a little bit and it's very forgiving. And I in face powders, I discovered this from watching, I think it was Elle Leary might have been. She talked about this um, makeup artist named Danessa Myricks and she has just now come up with a line of products and they sell this on Beautylish. Um, Danessa Myricks is the name and this is the face powder. This is the Evolution powder in color uh, Invisible which is 01. This is a wonderful, extremely finely milled powder. It's one of those that looks like smoke when you, when you tap it in but it's very good for under the eyes and for just a light setting, um, if your foundation's a little tacky or if you just want to put a cohesive look to your whole face, this Danessa Myricks is just outstanding. And I discovered it this year, um, and I don't know much about her. I think she has other products as well. I did not care for the foundation, but I did like this powder very much. For blush, um, for powder blush, I generally actually really prefer a lot of my drugstore and affordable powder blushes, so this was kind of um, awkward, but I do like this, and it's Charlotte Tilbury's First Love. This is one of those kind of, um, it's light around the edge, and it's darker in the middle, and now you want to uh, add it to your cheeks. I think it's beautiful. There's a slight glow to it. 
Um, you can darken it, deepen it up if you like. I just think it's a beautiful, natural uh, flush of color. And First Love is really a cute name for it. I like it. It's not too obscene like some of the other names for products we've had. For cream blush, um, I discovered this line this year. Uh, they did send me a few things from there because I asked them. They're from the UK and they're called Look Fabulous Forever. And I'm sure you've seen some of the videos from there. Uh, they're older women. It's very minimalist makeup. It's not a lot of color. It's not a lot of glam. It's everyday kind of basic makeup. And she divides everything by warm tones or cool tones. It's very basic. There's only a few eyeshadow options. There's only a, a couple of blush options. This is one of the two blush options. <laughs> this is uh, Peach Cream. And this is the warm shade of blush, and this is what actually what I have on today. And I really like it. It's a, just a very pleasant, this is kind of a hard pack uh, cream. It's not real soft and gushy like a gel cream. Um, it stays put. You can put a little bit of powder uh, blush over the top if you like. This is great for traveling. Cream Peach is the warmer shade or neutral shade. I really like this very much. and. Uh, uh, you know, there were a lot of blushes to choose from, and I did like theirs, so. For highlight, I use the one in the Hourglass palette mostly, but I do like the Becca, and these are those little mini palettes. This is the Vanilla Quartz. You still have a mirror here. The Vanilla Quartz is a very light uh, golden color. You just get a little bit of a sheen. It's not a in-your-face stripes from NASA kind of view. Um, you can you know, highlight different areas, peak areas. You can even use it if you wish um, as an eyeshadow. So I do like this, and it's called Vanilla Quartz. I love their little, they call them macarons, but I call them spaceships. I think they look like the little spaceships. <laughs> For contour, this one last year, and it's winning this year, I use it every day. This is the Fenty Matchsticks in Amber. And I like it because it goes on so easily. I'm almost out of this one. This is my second one, so I'll be buying a third. I just do a little bit of a triangle here in the corner, and then I just blend it with my fingers. And it gives just that little bit of dimension to my face so I'm not so chipmunk cheeky, you know? I like this better than the powders. I think it's really good for traveling. Uh, it hasn't failed me yet, and it's a cool toned brownish grayish tone, so that it's more of a natural shadowing effect rather than an orange tone or brown. For face palettes, and I had to do this because I didn't know where else to put this. Uh, this is the, let me see if I can clean it off. Uh, this is the Hourglass Ghost Palette, and they put out a palette every year that has an assortment of six shades. There is a nice mirror here. Uh, they generally will have a bronzer, two blushes, they'll have a, um, this is a shimmery highlight, this is a setting powder, and then this is a, um, a light setting powder if you have darker skin. So generally, these two shades, I blend them together to make one blush color. And if you use hourglass powders correctly, um, they really give your face a lustrous look. I mean, you can overdo it with the wrong things in the wrong place and you can kind of look a little disco ball. But generally, if you just add a little bit of this blush to the tops of your cheeks or even you can put it under your brow bone for a little bit of shimmer, uh, the blushes together are just gorgeous. And they're subtle, you know, they're very subtle. They do usually change out the blushes every year, but most of these other things are the same. Now the setting powder is really nice. Um, I use it. Um, you can set anything with this. So it's a really nice general all over setting powder. Um, the bronzer is very nice. It's a light bronze, so it's more for people with medium to light skin tones. But I do like this. This is the Hourglass Ghost Palette. On my nails today, this is the Orly shade Gimme a Lido Kiss. And it's a, a beautiful bright red, perfect for the holidays. 
and it is um, got a little bit of shimmer in it and it's just a beautiful I would say a perfect red nail polish for me if you go more for the pinks this is the giggling all the way from the Sesame Street collection from China Glaze and China Glaze has a wonderful assortment of uh, nail polishes in honor of the 50th anniversary of Sesame Street. For eyebrows, um, this is an unusual one because I generally use my drugstore or, or um, affordable options, but as far as high end goes, I'm almost a pan on this one. This is the Jane Iredell Brow Set. And what you get here is a wax, you get a powder, and you get a dual-ended um, brush and applicator. So the, the, I put it into the wax first, and I go up and I kind of prime my eyebrows into position. And then I turn it around to this, and I go into this powder, which is just perfect. And I create my eyebrows. And then I turn it around again and I just kind of brush through that color so that it mixes well with the powder. This is great, it has a mirror with it as well. It's flat, it's good for traveling. I think it's great, it's from Jane Ardell. <laughs> if you ever go to her website, she says that after every little video and everything. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of liquid eyeshadows. This is something that's kind of strange and foreign to me. <laughs> But Stila makes this. This is called Kitten, and this is a liquid eyeshadow. Every time I put this on, I get compliments on my eye look. And one put it like like right there. And you can use your finger to blend it. It brightens up your whole eye look. And it's just shimmery and pretty and it just adds something. It's just something about it. It adds something. And I, you know, I'm not a huge fan of liquid eyeshadows, but this lasts really well and it gives whatever you're wearing a very elegant and beautiful look. And I think it's just so pretty. It's just pretty. This is a girly shade. This is the actual kitten itself. Don't mistake it for the other, there's another kitten that they have out, just regular kitten. Uh, liquid eyeshadow from Stila. Wonderful. For mini eye palettes, uh, this is the Viseart Petite Rose Edit. And this is a small little palette, but you can do some powerful things with it. I can create my daily look, and I have with this. It's got some really interesting colors for a little pop of color here and there. Um, I love this shade, which is kind of a shimmery, um, taupey shade, which is nice for lining under the eyes. I like the pink and the orange that you can put right up here in the 10 and 2 portion to kind of warm up the look. Um, I love the light shimmer shade. I like the purple. Um, the brown is great. The yellow is good for a base. This is a really, really nice, well thought out palette and the quality is outstanding. It's a tiny little thing, great for traveling. It's got a mirror. It's not a huge mirror, but it's got a mirror. I love this. And the quality is just, Viseart, you can't, it's really hard to beat Viseart quality. They are just so wonderful. Medium palettes. I'm sorry, it is, it is what it is. Shade and Light from Kat Von D. This has won, I think, four years in a row for me because I consistently go back to this for my base eye look. I think it has, like, for transition shade right here, for crease shade, you have this beautiful crease shade here. Um, it's got some darker shades, some light white. It's got a nice black. You can wet that for, for eye lining. This is just perfect. You can use this kind of orangey shade right here along the edge of the ridge to kind of transition up into the brow area. It is just a perfect um, palette. Now it generally is divided into quads. This, this quadrant here has you know all of your um, neutrals. This is cool and then this is warm. So they have everything you need to make cohesive eye looks no matter your skin tone, no matter 
your uh, undertone absolutely amazing palette I totally recommend the shade and light palette I'm staying out of the politics I mean uh, it's just it's not worth it for limited edition palettes and I just have to add that in because limited edition palettes can be wonderful um, but they are limited edition and you can't get them anymore but you can get them on eBay or Amazon or somewhere this was the Game of Thrones Game of Thrones eye palette and you know I like the brush as well but I still dip into this I still dip into this it is an amazing grouping of colors now they grouped them by the houses if you know anything about Game of Thrones there were different houses of families and kingdoms and things and they all represented particular aspects some were more naturey woodsy based some were kind of elegant and golden some were uh, dragons and then the dead people okay the dead people has the blues and the whites um, this has got some stunning colors I mean this just this teal is just amazing and then here for the Winterfell we've got this beautiful dark uh, green and this beautiful burgundy for the um, King's Landing which are the rich people you've got these nice reds and transition colors and then you have these main colors here out on the outside and you have the four um, inside now I did do a, uh, a dedicated video to the Game of Thrones collection um, which is really funny actually my husband and I uh, did do kind of skits and things and it's kind of amusing but I used all of these and we were in costume and uh, I do I still dip into this so it's it's kind of weird um, we all you know as soon as Game of Thrones ended it was kind of like it was over okay <laughs> but I still like it and you know I still pull this open every now and then you know it just I'm just a kid I'm just such a kid but I do like the eye palette and I still use it and I, for a limited edition palette this was my favorite this year moving on to lips uh, for lip liner it was hands down lime crime and I, I'm not a huge lime crime person I, I usually their stuff isn't really in my in my real house but this is a fabulous lip liner I'm just going to show you I wear this lip liner every day we're down to a nib here because I do wear this lip liner every day but lime crime once you find the color you like this is a wonderful lip liner it keeps everything in place it goes well with everything it makes a, a great base for other lipsticks to go over the top and it's, it's a quality product for lipsticks what I am wearing today is from Clinique and I was thinking you know Clinique oh, you know it's an old lady brand nobody even talks about Clinique anymore and I'm like but I'm an old lady. I'm one of them now. So this beautiful color is Papaya Pop. It's not over the top bright. It is just a very pretty primer infused lipstick. So it is a primer, a lip primer and a lipstick together. It lasts a long time. It conditions your lips. This is fabulous. These are part of that pop collection. They have several shades. Once you find your shade, you'll be really happy. But I love this shade, and it's called Papaya Pop. For nude lipstick, and I had to categorize separately because there's different types of lip products, and I thought, well, you know, I, I really want to give some other lip products credit because I have been using other lip products. For the nude, again this year, Charlotte Tilbury's Bitch Perfect has one for the nude. I love this shade. This is the perfect nude shade. This is a slightly pinky shade. It's sexy. It lasts a long time. Uh, it looks great on a plethora of skin tones and undertones. It's just a wonderful shade. This is Charlotte Tilbury. The case is nice. It's, it's just my favorite all around lipstick has always been Charlotte Tilbury's Bitch Perfect for the last couple of years. And I, you know, I try a lot of things. For unique 
uh, lip products that I feel are high quality and should be given some kind of acknowledgement. These are the confession lipsticks from Hourglass and the, I, the idea is, is that you can buy refills and then reuse the gold tube case which is really elegant and beautiful. It looks like a pen in your purse and when you're looking for it in your purse you pull everything out except it. This one is called um, You Will Find Me. You Can Find Me. And let me just uh, pull my lipstick off and put this on so you can see it. So this is You Can Find Me. Now in the summertime, this was just bitchin' color, okay? Isn't that great? I love it. I love it. But these confession lipsticks are just wonderful, and you should look at the different colors in there because this one, as you can find me, it's a little bit bright and towards the red coral side. Uh, there are more subdued shades and other shades. But I like the idea that once your lipstick is gone, you can just buy another refill at like half the cost of what it costs with the case. And you can um, just replace it. It just pops right in. And I think that's a great concept. For the last lip product is, these are lip glosses or liquid lips, and these are the metallics range from Sephora and I love this one. Um, this particular one is number 106 from Sephora. It's their own home brand and I'm just going to... My lips are going to hate me. Just needs a minute to dry. This is just beautiful. There's a bright red one too, uh, but this is the 106. This is more of a muted um, peachy kind of red. It's not a red red. And this is a great everyday color. It really shines during the day. When the sun hits it, you can see a little bit of a metallic sheen, but in the evening, it's just a pretty lipstick. And this lasts quite a while. For standard lip gloss, I have Marc Jacobs Cream and Sugar, and I like it because you can just put it on the center of your lips and purse your lips, and it kind of gives your whole lip look a brightness without being the whole thing. This is a lip plumping uh, gloss. There is a mintiness to it, so it does give you that little bit of raised lip, which is nice. It's not drying. So I do like this. I got this in a set. There was a set of two or three things, but this is cream and sugar, the gloss. Eyeliner, Kat Von D, Trooper in black. Love this. This is um, absolutely wonderful uh, eyeliner. It doesn't splay out. It's easy to use. Whenever I wear false lashes, which I am wearing today, um, I use it to fill in the gaps or to draw the line that intros it here to the front of my eye. I love this eyeliner. It's a wonderful eyeliner. You do have to shake it up before you use it. There's a little rock in there. <laughs> this is a great, great eyeliner. Trooper from Kat Von D. For mascaras, I, I believe that one last year and I just ran out and I threw it out without thinking so I can't show you the package but I'm going to put it right here now. Caution Extreme Lashes from Hourglass is just an outstanding mascara. Outstanding. I get those big honking lashes I love. It does not uh, smudge. It does not leave little dings on my upper eye because I have hooded eyes. It does not smear underneath. If I'm, it's cry proof. 
Um, it's a, just a marvelous, marvelous mascara. Now I have two other types of mascara. One is a very liquidy mascara. This is the Milk Kush Mascara. Um, this gives you a really long honkin' lash. The brush is a wonderful applicator. It is a little bit of a sloppy kind of wet formula, so some people don't like that part. Um, it's a little bit less expensive than the uh, Hourglass Mascara as an option. I think the Milk Kush Mascara is one of my favorites, one of my top three. Let's talk about Tightline Mascara. This is a mascara from IT Cosmetics. It came out about maybe five years ago, and it's very unique because the wand has the smallest, tiniest brush I have ever seen on a mascara. And when you open it, this is the regular size, when you open it, it is just, it looks like a straight line stick almost. And what it is, is you can push it up in your tight line area underneath your lashes and it kind of leaves little impressions. It looks like extended lashes. And you can push that in. That's the tight lining aspect. But if you use it as a regular mascara, it makes wonderful big honking lashes. It's a wonderful mascara on its own. And if you turn it on your side, you can actually use it as an eyeliner. So it's kind of a three-in-one product. And I love it. There is a waterproof version that they just come out with, and I have not tried that yet. But I would suggest if you haven't tried this, that you can maybe in the Ulta, near the end, they're getting their own impulse aisle items now, and there usually is a sample travel size of this that's very inexpensive. I think it's $10. The regular price of this, I think, is $24 for the, for the full size. But for $10, you should try the smaller version of this Tightline Mascara from IT Cosmetics. I think you'd be really pleased. I love this. If it, if it made a little bit more of a fuller, more uh, lengthy volume kind of lash, I would just say all around it's my favorite. But it's perfect for the lower lashes. It's perfect if you're not very experienced with mascara and you need a little, you have a shaky hand perhaps. Maybe you have a uh, physical handicap that you're working with. This is a great mascara because it's not going to smear all over the place and you can control better where it goes because the brush is so tiny that you can kind of control it. So I recommend this to anyone um, just to give it a try. And I believe it just comes in the black shade. It is absolutely marvelous mascara. False lashes I am wearing today are off of Amazon, so they are not high end, but I did use the pure uh, eyelash glue, and I love it because it really adheres well. I don't have to worry about the ends lifting up in the middle of the day like you can with some of the other um, eyelash glues. So this is the Pure Minerals Eyelash Glue. Four tools. The Tarte Eyelash Curler, uh, they have different things. They have like the mermaid one, they have one that's got stars on it. This is a basic one that I got. It usually comes with a Tarte mascara in a little set. And I think this is, I use this all year long. This is my uh, eyeshadow eye curler, eyelash curler. Now I do wash this. I do uh, run some soap on it and I run paper towel through. I do spray it with alcohol rub it through and I do rinse it off and let it air dry. So I do wash this. I think it's important to wash anything that's close to your eyes. For yeah. tweezers, the Tweezer Man. Tweezer Man tweezers, nothing like them. These are the little slant tips. Um, if you use a cheap tweezer, you will know what I mean. You, you, you go for the little hair and it just can't seem to get it. So this gets it. It's got the grab that you need to pull out all those tiny little hairs. Um, they tend to be more expensive than regular tweezers, but they're definitely worth it. So the Tweezer Man Tweezer. For um, makeup brush, this is my favorite foundation brush. It is a duo fiber um, buffing brush. So you would, you know, dot your face with the foundation and then you would swirl this on. This is the Face Atelier Pro number 88. This came with a makeup. I didn't like the makeup, but I love the brush. So I'm glad I ordered it. I think it was one of those QVC kind of things where I ordered the set and I didn't like 
the stuff, but I did like the brush and I use this almost every day when I'm not using the sponge. For powder brushes, I still use this and this was a gift about, I'd say six years ago, this was a gift from one of my viewers. This is the Jessup powder brush. I still have it. I use it almost daily. This is a great powder brush. It's also great for contour and bronzing. I love this and I think it's a wonderful, Jessup makes wonderful brushes. You never hear about them anymore. Um, I did try the Teddy Bear Hair brushes from Too Faced and I do like that I have the set of them. Um, I do like the powder brush and the blush brush. Um, they did get a little bit misshapen. This is a, a synthetic hair um, brush because they are a vegetarian line. <laughs> um, these are really nice little brushes and they're very cute the way they decorate them. For eye brush, um, I had debated talking about this brand because I'm not sure if the lawsuit has been settled yet. This is Thrive Cosmetics and this is their basic eyeshadow brush. This is my favorite eyeshadow brush of all time. Uh, Thrive Cosmetics is, um, it's called Thrive Cosmetics as in causes, as in charity causes. Uh, for every product that you buy, they supposedly give a product to uh, like a, a cancer society or a women's shelter or something. They give away one product for every one product they sell. They ran into trouble last year when they filed their taxes and what they claimed they made in revenue did not equal twice what they gave away for charity donations. So uh, there was a little bit of concern as to why didn't they, if, if they sold you know $1,000 worth of stuff, why did they not give away $500 worth of stuff? So they were going through that and it was a big lawsuit. So I'm not sure how that panned out. Uh, so I didn't want to support them through this. I wasn't sure if they were really giving away one product for every product you bought because the products are higher priced and the idea behind that was that you are helping donate to give a product to somebody in need. So I just didn't want to promote them thinking that they were cheating, thinking that they weren't really giving a product for a product. So I don't know how the lawsuit went and I don't want to throw shade at them because I love the idea of what they do and I love their products. I think this brush is just outstanding. Um, I think it's just called the eyeshadow brush. Yeah, it's just called the eyeshadow brush. And it's, it's a perfect brush. You can use it for all facets of your eye makeup. Makeup Geek is the other um, brush that I use religiously. This is the pencil brush from Makeup Geek. I haven't found a pencil brush that's as good ever. So Makeup Geek makes the best pencil brush. It's just perfect. I've had this several years. I wash it after every use and it's hung in there. Now I have tape on some of my brushes and that's because I mark them whether they're uh, lining brushes, whether they're uh, crease brothers brushes or whether they're regular shadow brushes. So it's easy for me to grab like these are my crease brushes are yellow. These are lining brushes. <laughs> these crazy things we do. I had a little bit too much time on my hands I think. But um, yeah, it's great. Absolutely great. For setting sprays, I have been using my Max Fix Plus and basically you can put that in. There is a light scent to it. It does kind of moisturize your face when you have put your makeup on to help set it and to help it um, look nice and cohesive. It is also very helpful if you want to put it on a brush before you put it into an eyeshadow and it will help the eyeshadow uh, look far more pigmented on your eye. It's also good for creating uh, with a liner brush, you can create um, more of a, if you put this in a shadow, you can create an eyeliner with it and it's, it's a really great product. So I think MAC Fix Plus um, is a wonderful, it's a setting spray and it's also something that will help you with your uh, eyeshadow. Um, I heard one lady talk about this. She said she sprayed her, um, 
her sponge with it. So when she put her makeup on, she already had the Fix Plus on there. And I thought that was a great idea. And speaking of, um, for sponges, I do like the original Beauty Blender. I think this is just a wonderful product. It started the craze. Uh, there's something about the formula of this, it's squishy. It's squishy and the others aren't as squishy and they're not as porous and they're not the same. Uh, this is easy to clean. I find that some of the other ones are not so easy to clean. Um, I don't like the fuzzy one compared to it. I, I don't care for the, what is this? This is the uh, Real Techniques one. Um, this one, I, this is my third one. It gets cracked and damaged. So the Beauty Blender is an excellent tool to have for your makeup. For setting spray, if it's hardcore, like I'm going to a wedding or I'm going to an event that's all day, or if I'm going outside where the elements are going to be a pain, like really hot heat outside wedding or something, or graduation or some kind of formal event, this Scandinavia, this is the bridal spray. I think this is the best one. Um, it's a wonderful thing. Scandinavia makes the best setting sprays. They make the ones for Urban Decay as well. For cologne, um, I'm wearing a couple of things that have been discontinued. I was really surprised. The Stella, um, this is the natural spray Stella uh, perfume. They used to carry it at Sephora. They do not anymore. It is in light rose. She calls it an English rose scent. I love this. I'm almost like a quarter down into the bottle. Um, and then this one is Le Parfum. This is the vanilla, bourbon, and uh, mandarin scent. So it's a citrusy vanilla with a little bit of bourbon kind of scent to it. I love this, this is wonderful. You can find this as candles and as incense, but you cannot find this as perfume or cologne anymore. And I'm really sad about that. It doesn't last very long. It's not a long lasting cologne, but. So that does it for my high end luxury brand makeup. Um, I will be doing my affordable and drugstore makeup best of 2019 next and uh, look for that in a couple of days and I'd love to know what some of your favorite high-end products are for this past year. Um, I learned from you and if it's something I haven't tried before I'm certainly going to run out and give it a try because that's how I am. This is why I ran into financial difficulties this year. <laughs> anyway, all the products I talked about are linked below. I hope all of you are having a wonderful week. Have a beautiful day. Take care. Toodles.